All right, let's take a look at using Adobe Photoshop to do a timeline-based animatic where timing and layers and all sorts of things that we are used to doing in Photoshop can be applied uh, in the service of making a time-based piece. So we might start as we usually do, uh, and you can go to the film and video presets for this, the HDTV 1920 by 1080 keep going with our RGB color and uh, our resolution never needs to be more than screen res here which is 72 pixels per inch so you're used to seeing this but what we will add to this picture is uh, the timeline so by going to window I'm going to select timeline we'll see now a video timeline but um, it's still just a single image in time. So what we're going to have to do is create video timeline. As soon as we click create video timeline, a couple things happen. First of all, um, we no longer have a locked background. We also have time here. We have five Fs. <laughs> and in this case, uh, it's a frames indicator, but also a seconds indicator. This is currently set at a 29. 0.97 frames per second timeline. So um, nothing is much changed except that we now have the ability to change things over time. So for example, if we do a little split here and maybe draw uh, something in here, we can then have things change over time as we scrub through the timeline. If we hit play, you can see it uh, playing in real time or attempting to play in real time you'll see the actual values down here I believe green indicates that uh, yeah your system is capable of keeping up with the speed of this uh, we can also delete bits let's look at the options for this format before we get too far we can set the frame rate and uh, we might do something like a 24 which is a preset you can also do 12 and then output to 24, which I think I'm going to recommend. It just means that you're going to be looking at fewer numbers here. Once we uh, set this to render, we'll be able to render video. And we'll be able to put out a specific frame rate here. So something like our 23976, which is a video standard, or you know, for us, you know, an animation standard of 24 is going to be perfectly fine. So we know that we can output our 24 and work at 12 because we're never going to really be animating anything more complicated than on the twos. I would be surprised if you had anything that needed to last a frame in length. So let's, uh, let's look at this uh, holistically here as a means to save uh, some work when it comes to doing backgrounds because in an animatic your characters are going to change much more frequently then the background is going to change. So for example, we focus the camera on a specific area of the room and characters enter, characters do action, characters leave, whatever it happens to be, but that background stays consistent. And in order to make the animatic look the best, we'll have very consistent looking backgrounds without having to change them every time we're changing the foreground. So let's do, uh, let's start by getting a background in here. I'm just going to whip something up. All right, let's just go with something like this for now. We got a door and a pillar and we'll have some characters interacting here. So right now we've got a two second shot. Let's say I want this to be about eight. All right, stretch it on out to eight there. And uh, now we're gonna start uh, dealing with some layers. Now at the moment we've got a uh, shot one and background. So we're gonna want to put our characters on a separate layer. So I'm going to start by doing that. Notice it's still giving us that five second um, thing here, uh, which is fine. Let's say one of our characters uh, remains static, and that's going to be our guard who's standing at the door there. So in layer one, I will sketch him in, and I might uh, just do a little blue line here to begin with, just so that I've got a good foundation. And I scaled him so he seemed like he fit a little bit better in there. Let's introduce our new character. He's going to show up at about the two second mark. And they are going to come on in and hide in this foreground here. 
And it's only going to take them a second to find their new spot here. So I'm going to put a split here and delete them out of that. Now I want to see where he's been and where he's going. So while I'm parked right on the slit between the first part of the shot and the second part of the shot, I can turn on something called onion skins. And onion skins is making my background dark, so that's not great. And uh, I can change some of the settings here. I'm having trouble getting my blue line to show up, so I'm going to just uh, let it overlap by a little bit so I can see where it's been. And um, get this next one paced out here. All right, and I do think I want to move them in a little bit. And let's let them, let's flip them around too so that they're arriving. And we'll do a little split there. And then this performance, we're going to select all and delete it. Switch to my brush, deselect, and get them up. All right, and that's probably our first shot. Let's play that in sequence and make sure our timing's good. Two seconds is a long time to wait. Let's move everybody back. You can see that I've shift clicked it to select them and drag them back. And I'm going to go with this guy is really booking. So the downside of this is with this method, you got to move everybody one at a time a little bit. Spacebar also plays. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm still going to tighten, tighten, tighten. Everything will typically feel too slow to begin with. And let's do right here, we'll do a head turn. So instead of redrawing everything, I'm just going to erase my head and... Make a little change there. Okay. So now this is a shot. I'm going to save it. And I can also, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to cut it about the five second mark. So my eight second thing I was wrong about. I'm going to go ahead and trim this all down. This is a single shot, but it's made up of a lot of different pieces. And then I think I would take all of those with another shift click and group them. I'm going to call this shot a one. What I can then do is make a new layer and make sure that these two are not overlapping, which they currently are. And this is going to be my shot two once I get to it. I might choose to keep my basic value the same. So when I'm in here, I might fill with that color so that I have a nice even bump between those two as we go. If you ever dis dislodge the uh, timeline, you can just redock it by dragging it down to the bottom. All right. Now is the uh, slightly more laborious part. I can open up shot one and then go in and start refining these drawings, which means I'm probably putting new layers on top and then hiding or deleting my key art here. So let's uh, let's try that quick. The other thing I'm going to think about for something like this is that I do probably want to fill that character so we don't see through him. If I pick him up, you can see that he's transparent. It's not super offensive, but maybe I just want to throw some color behind him. If I'm satisfied that I don't need my line layer anymore, I can come in here and maybe uh, let's fill them with... Uh, maybe not go quite so bright. Kick it down a bit. Ostensibly, I could merge those two if I want. That was a control E for me to merge it. Now let's get on with our sneaking guy.
In this case, too, I'm going to just repeat that drawing so I don't have to start from scratch. The only thing that's changing is his head, so I'm just going to use my scissors there to chop that loose. I'm going to probably just drag this guy down and make it my new fill. Make sure that's empty. And uh, let's tune up this drawing so it looks like a head turn. All right, let's take a look at that first shot. All right, you notice a couple layers flickered at the end there. Let's double check and make sure. One thing you want to do is zoom in and make sure that all your layers are ending at the same moment. I might have to get in pretty tight to detect this. So my background lasted the longest. My guard disappeared. So I think that's the real end of the shot right there. There we go. Now presumably we're going to cut to something like to think about his next move. And we just keep building that up until we've got our sequence. But maybe let's push it. Let's push it. I want everything to go a little faster. So for this, I might zoom in on my timeline. I might trim everything. Let's trim everything by about half. Luckily, our guard isn't moving much. Sometimes you got to park on the shot to know that you've actually got the tail end of it. There we go. Yeah, that's fun. Cool. And then you'd keep going. Okay, let's look at uh, some specific things about the layer menu here. My screen capture failed to capture the layers menu, so I want to make sure that this is super clear. So I've got a number of things here that are in the timeline, all looking okay. But uh, from an organization standpoint, I guess like a lot of stuff to scroll through. So let's uh, look at maybe selecting and shift selecting. That's a shift click. And then using the little folder guy to group them thusly. And we can rename that to you know, Shadow One. Um, one thing that sometimes happens is that uh, things get out of order in here. So right now, Shot One has been uh, closed up. So it's taking a very little space. But uh, something can happen where we do one of these numbers. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, you know, things going out of order like that. What happened over on the right here, you can see it says video group. Two things have uh, formed a new timeline called a video group here because they are in sequence within the same layer. Now, you could probably use that for something, but I think it's just neater to keep those loose. So if you have that happen, grab them, drag them out of the group, and then trash the group, and you should be back in business there. So that's something you can do. Uh, likewise, you know, um, you could end up putting all of your stuff into separate groups like that, which is going to make managing uh, several shots a lot easier. I would also say you probably, just from a sanity standpoint, don't want to do any more than about 30 seconds in a single Photoshop project because it'll start to get mm, heavy. Um, if you make a mistake and screw it up, you're losing a lot of work. So something like 30 seconds is a good, you know, sort of real length. That's R-E-E-L. When you're ready to put this out, we're going to go to Render Video. And uh, like I said, we've got the document frame rate, but we're going to want to put out something that will play uh, at a more uh, typical frame rate for editing because we'll be taking these in eventually and uh, doing things like adding sound to them. So once I'm done, uh, I can name it. I can set it to go out at a specific destination. And then I'll use our H.264 here, which is perfectly fine for the kinds of things that we're going to do with it. These are drawings. There are low uh, amounts of information typically, so a little bit of a video compression is not going to hurt us any. 
will take a little while to render, but when it does, you'll end up with a little QuickTime movie that can then be brought onto other platforms for, you know, further post work.